All right, so having made millions of dollars trading for almost the past eight years, here's the simple way that I effortlessly trade pretty much every single market. It's all based around the same concepts. So what I like to do is I like to start with a chart here like Tesla, and I like to go to the indicators. I like to add a moving average. I like to add a relative strength index. I like to add a sessions indicator. The 24 hour volume is also good. And also the advanced decline line. You're really, you're really sleeping if you're not using the advanced decline line. And the last thing here is Arun, but just, just to make sure that I'm having um, some good confluence, I use an auto pitchfork. So that's it. I mean, it's pretty simple stuff if you look here, like prices here. And then if you, if you look at this, the 24 hour volume, I mean, it's just pretty, it's pretty straightforward and simple. I mean, if you, if you're not able to do this, this is pretty much as simple as it gets, you know, you probably shouldn't even be trading to begin with now completely screwing around. A lot of people do all this stuff and I see insane amounts of needless complexity. People spend so much time doing things that do not matter at the cost of things that really do matter. And I think that the best way to trade from my experience is simply to keep things simple and control risk. Now you see this little curved line here on my chart. This is complete bullshit. This is just, it's a sign line I, I got from this little trading view thing. And then, you know, you just put it on your chart and line it up. You, it makes you look like a God trading, but it's complete bullshit. All I use is support and resistance. I trade Forex this way. For example, just on Friday, yesterday, I made $3,000 trading Forex. Let's look at how simple this trade was. This is a Euro CAD trade. I called this in my close friends group where I share all my trades to clients. I put sold your Euro CAD. I mean, there is really not much more to it. It's a clear support resistance zone. It's literally all I use, support resistance and basic price action. And I sold whenever it got to the zone. So this, this was my entry as soon as I got in there. This was the $2,000 risk. And then that was where I entered it at. And then um, whenever price pushed it a little bit deeper into the zone, I got a little bit better entry and I had planned to use you know position sizing such that if that occurred, I could add to the position. So I added a little bit to the position. Then when it finally bounced away from the zone, I closed right there. This resulted in a $3,000 profit. And that's Forex. I do the same shit in stocks, okay? On Friday, I made $3,000. This past week alone, I've made almost $10,000 trading stocks. And I call all these stock trades live in my free Telegram. If you wanna join, it's the first link in the description of this video. Have fun. I post literally all my analysis. There's like 50,000 people in the Telegram right now. I do stocks the same damn way. It's just basic price action support resistance. I even do crypto the same damn way. It doesn't, it literally does not matter which market it is. It's always been the same shit over and over and over and over and over for almost eight years now. I've been trading about six of these years, arguably six and a half of these years profitably. It took me about a year and a half to two years to learn until it got profitable. And then I was, I've been doing really good for like the past six years, but it's all revolved around the same basic shit over and over and over and over and over. So how do we start whenever you get to your chart? First off, you just want to start with a clean chart. We're going to go to something super simple like Amazon, for example. I'm, I'm in an Amazon trade right now. I'm sorry, I'm in a Tesla trade right now based off support or resistance. And if you look at this right here, this was just support like once, twice, tried to be a third time, broke below, tested as resistance, broke back above. I think it might bounce up as support. These stupid curved lines have nothing to do with anything. It's just complete bullshit, just like all of technical analysis, in my opinion. Technical analysis is only good as a way of controlling risk. I don't think there's any, any speculative or predictive value in technical analysis. It just gives you a way to say, if I enter here and price breaks below this area and goes down here, below the support zone, then I can close the trade at a loss. But if it bounces here and goes up, then I can close the trade at a little bit bigger of a profit, such that even if you have a 50% win rate, if you just make a little bit more than you lose long term, you just do that over and over and over again. As long as those metrics are true, you have at least a 50% win rate and you make a little bit more on your average winners than you lose on your average losers. That's profitability. That is just objectively true if those statistics and metrics are true. So with that said, I'm long here on Amazon. And whenever you look at, whenever you look back at price, the same shit happens over and over and over. I mean, it's just the same stuff over and over. I'll take, for example, an AMD trade that I called out in my free Telegram channel this week. Here on the daily chart, we can see that price bounced here at support over and over and over. Then it broke below, tested as resistance one, two, three times. Fourth time here, broke above, and then it came back to the support zone. Now, as logic would have it, since it's bounced here over and over as support, and then when it broke, it bounced over and over as resistance, I just thought price might be likely to bounce there at support. So what did I do? I went into AMD and I bought, and I bought about a 200K position, I believe. Let's go actually check on my trading PL history. I took three trades on AMD last week, 
and here they were. So, um, AMD market buy on the 25th and the 29th. So I had $100,000 there and $100 here is my average prices. I sold the whole position at $206,000. So I made $6,000 just on that alone. And then you can see I got into two more AMD trades throughout the rest of the week, which was a market buy here, $100,000 on the 30th. I sold the next day at pretty much break even. And then another market buy here, $50,000. And I sold the next day pretty much at break even. So tiny profits, pretty much break even trades. So if whenever I whenever I'm right, I tend to make more money than when I'm wrong. And oftentimes a lot of my losers end up just being break even. And I'm gonna actually show you how that works here. So let me show you how even though I just have a one to one risk reward ratio, preaching from the mountaintops, just trading support resistance, let me show you how the stats play out. If you have a, a resistance zone, for example, and price comes to that resistance zone, and it, it has bounced in the past, you know, then it has a nice move off of it and it comes back into the resistance zone and then you decide to sell, right? And that's the whole analysis. There's no rejection. There's no waiting for the confirmation. There's no adding in a freaking moving average or a trend line or, you know, looking at, at the SMA and the, uh, you know, the stochastic RSI oscillator. There's no need for smart money concept, institutional order block, bank manipulation, fair value distribution gap, Wagyu beef, bullish candlestick rejection patterns before getting into the trade. None of that bullshit. I, I literally just sell whenever it gets to the resistance zone in most cases. Now, there is nuance and context and subtleties to this. There are some times where I will feel it is the best decision to not sell at a resistance zone and not buy at a support zone, given the particular context and the price action surrounding that move. But in general, this is essentially all I do. I just wait for price to get resistance, wait for price to get support, and I make context-based decisions based on what I think price action is likely to do next. So say you start a trade-off, right? A simple one-to-one -one risk to reward ratio. If price starts to bounce and move into profit, worst case scenario, if it hits the profit target, you make one R. That's great. If it starts going into loss, worst case scenario, you lose one R. It's essentially a 50-50, right? And the worst case scenario, in my opinion, if, if you just are literally entering random positions at one to one risk rewards, risking the same unit of risk for each time, a hundred bucks, a thousand bucks, 10,000 bucks, whatever it is your one unit of risk is. So you risk a thousand bucks on this. The worst case scenario is that it's a break even system over time. That's literally the worst case scenario from my experience. If we just take the objective fact of the matter that you're roughly going to be right 50% of the time and wrong 50% of the time right? Could not get more stupidly, effortlessly simple. If we take that metric and then we go into active trade management and we look at, okay, how do we manage our trades based on the context and how do we control the risk and use an appropriate risk structure? Check it out. If price starts bouncing into profit and then it starts to maybe pull back again, then makes a lower high and starts going into more profit. If you think price is likely to continue going down, well, here's what I do. I simply add to my winning trade. So I'll add to it. I'll protect the first position at break even. And then I'll try to get a profit target somewhere down here. It doesn't always work out that both targets are met. Sometimes I'll close both of them at the first target. So it ends up being negative risk reward in the second position. But overall, it's still profitable because as price starts to give confirmation that it is in fact moving to your, to your intended target, from my experience, it ends up being a little bit more likely that that trade's actually gonna move to the final target. It's very similar to like watching a horse race. If you're watching a horse race, and this is the starting line right here, and the horses have to make a little like loop around the track, right? So if you have one horse that starts the race, and we'll go on the inside here, it starts the race, and then it's coming around, and then it's really, really, really close to winning, like it's right there close to the finish line, but then you have another horse that started the race, and then that horse is like back here, and you look at, okay, well, it appears as though this horse is like three seconds ahead of this horse, and it looks like this horse is going to win. Imagine if at that exact moment in time when it looks like that horse is finally about to get there to the finish line, and you think it's very likely this horse is going to win, and you also think it's very unlikely this horse is going to win, unless this horse can break the laws of physics and somehow get ahead of this horse. But for all intents and purposes, you can bet more on the winning horse in trading. That is the way that it works. And how do you do this? It's by adding to winning trades. Imagine if you had bet like $100 on this horse, right? And then you know the horse is losing. It doesn't look like it's going to win. It's it's just, you know, it's far behind the winning horse. It just doesn't look like it's going to be a profitable outcome for you. Would you increase your bet of $100 to this horse to $200? Would you like go double down 10x and say like, I'm going to bet $1,000 on the losing horse. I'm going to add to my losing horse. 
if you think it's not going to work. That doesn't make any sense. In trading, adding to a losing trade where there's no other opportunity that sets up that dictates that it is, in fact, another presentable trading opportunity that you can trade your system on, simply adding to losing trades just because they're in drawdown doesn't really make any sense. There are certain contexts in which I believe it is useful to add to losing trades, but in general, I don't believe that it's something overall that most traders should be doing unless it's done within the right context and there's plenty of experience to dictate the proper intuition that would allow them to do something like that profitably while still controlling risk in a relatively simple way. In this case, though, it makes no sense to add to the losing horse. It makes more sense to add to the winning horse. That's how you can do this in trading. You add to the winning trade. As long as you can protect the first position at break even, if it moves to your final target, you now have made double whatever it was you risked. And then if it moves back against you and goes to the invalidation stop loss, say, for example, it just shoots up here on a news event, right? Rockets through. Well, you break even on that trade. You break even on that trade. There we go. And then you take a 1R loss on that trade. Your, your cumulative PL was negative 1R. But wait, folks, there's more. And I'll tell you what's more. Because this is where it gets really nice and fun. Is that you don't always have to take a 1R loss on the trades that you lose. And I'll show you why. Let's say you sell at this resistance zone. And then price starts going sideways. It painting all these candles. And then like maybe, you know, like a day later, it tries to move into profit, but then it pops right back up at the zone and starts going sideways again. If it looks as though your horse is going to lose the race, you could beat the shit out of your horse. I'm just kidding. You can close your trade at break even and you could just get out of the trade. Trading allows you to do that. You don't have to hold your trade to the stop loss or to the profit target. I know a lot of people who trade mechanical systems that work perfectly fine, literally just holding to the TP or stop loss. But from my experience, once you get plenty of experience seeing price action, learning all the subtleties, the nuances, and you can develop that intuition, that subconscious intuition that, that gives you the wisdom to decide what to do in the present moment, you can use that to your advantage. It is totally an edge to be able to use your experience and your skill set in technical analysis and price action trading to be able to say, you know what? I think the trade is not freaking working out. Let me just get the hell out of the trade. Perfectly fine for you to scratch that trade there. And if it ends up going to the profit target, okay, you know, cool. It is what it is. If it ends up going to what would have been the stop loss and invalidation, well, you avoided a bad trade because it appeared the trade wasn't working. And so in this case, this would have been a break even trade. That is why when I showed you my AMD positions, I was able to get out of these positions that did not work at break even. And I am trying to find that again right here. But again, I'm showing you this right here. I bought $100,000 on 30th, sold the next day at 100200 So I made 200 bucks on that, but it was pretty much a break even trade. Same thing here. Then the same day, about $50,000. It didn't work. It started floating sideways. There was no momentum. Price wasn't moving into profit very easily. I closed at like a $100 profit. So essentially a break even pretty much for another 50K. But when I'm right, I make a lot of money because I start my position here, for example, on the 25th at $100. As it started to move into profit, you could see my first position was at 101. This had moved into profit to $104 um, at the average price. I added four days later. That same day, it rocketed into the profit. It was another like two or three percent. I liquidated all the positions at a cumulative profit of $6,200 in a day, and that's just one trade. Just on on just last Friday, on the was it yesterday? Friday, I made 3,000, and the whole last week, I made almost 10k just doing this. And I don't even trade stocks full time. I trade stocks part time. This is like my gambling stock trading thing. I, FX is mainly my bread and butter and a little bit of crypto for like long term holds and screwing around making like 56 bucks on this, whatever this platform is that I that you're just I'm testing out. But it's the same old shit over and over and over. It's bounces of support or resistance, getting into trades where I think it's likely to work holding them to the profit target, and if I can, adding to them. And if I'm wrong, exiting the trades early. So that way, whenever I take a loss, my average loss, let's say, for example, I risked like $5,000 per trade. If I can keep my average loss around two to $3,000, but my average win is around maybe five to $7,000, because I'm making at least one R if I'm right, right? So if I risked 5K and I just hit the target, that's 5K profit. If I'm able to add to it, even if I close both my positions right there, I made a 5K profit there, and this is like a 0.78 R, even if it's only like a 0.5 R, that's half of what of one unit of risk. So I make an extra 2,500. That's like a, it's like a $7,500 profit if I'm right. But what if I'm wrong? The worst case scenario is that it goes and hits the stop loss, right? But like I said, oftentimes you can get out way earlier. Oftentimes if you're, if you're just using one to one to start the trade off and plan it out, 
and price breaks above the zone. Then it comes back to retest and it looks like it's going to bounce and start going up and it looks like it's making like higher highs. Well, dude, you're free, dude slash sis. You're free to close the trade right there around break even or a small loss, maybe one fourth or one half the way to the target. Now, instead of losing five grand, you maybe lose like two grand, like one grand or two grand or something like that. Right. All I'm saying is that you got to make a little bit more when you're right versus what you lose when you're wrong on average over a large basket of trades over an extended period of time. The trade by trade outcomes, the week by week outcomes, and oftentimes the month by month outcomes do not even matter. All that matters is keeping things simple and controlling risk, in my opinion. If you'd like to see me trade live literally every day for free, I've been running this Telegram channel for like five years where I've come to bat every single day to currently 51,215 people. And I literally share all my analysis. Here's, here's all the trades I called this week. For example, I, when I closed the AMD position, right? I, um, I had called this out. I share all my FX analysis, crypto stock. Literally, I just share it all in here. I just share everything that I do for free here in the Telegram channel. And the only thing I charge for is for people to just work with me a little bit closer and have access to my communities and stuff like that. That's the second link in the description. Don't worry about that for now. Worry about the first link, which is this free Telegram channel, because I give all the value you're going to need to begin with right here for free in the Telegram channel. This is where I called the AMD trade. And then I also put this is where I closed the position. And then right here, whenever I bought Tesla, you can see I called this trade out the trade that I'm in right now. I bought 50K worth of Tesla. And what is it all? A bounce of support. It's the whole analysis. Well, you may see people doing this long, complicated, drawn out, like smart money imbalance, liquidity sweep, institutional candle, bank manipulation, Kobe beef, Wagyu steak, candle bullshit. I don't know. Like if that works for them, great. For me, I'm not smart enough to do that shit. I made millions of dollars doing the bare minimum in trading. I'm a testament to the fact that you don't need a bunch of shit to be profitable. All you have to do is keep things simple, control risk, in my very humble opinion. And if you get plenty of experience doing that over time, I think it's likely that people can figure out trading as a result of developing their skill set and experience doing literally the bare minimum. That's my vote for you is I hope that you opt to keep things simple and control risk and focus on just making a little bit more than you lose long term. Because if you do that, objectively, you are profitable. The worst case scenario that happens with my system using a one to one risk reward ratio is that it's generally break even over time. And in my opinion, if your worst downside is like break even over time, if you're following the things and like the way that I do them, that's not really too bad of a system thinking that most people lose money trading and that trading is really risky. However, if you use a one to one and you have a 50% win rate, you're just breaking even minus a little bit of commissions and swap fees. I don't know. That sounds like a sounds like a great deal to me. <laughs> so yeah, check out my free telegram channel. First link in the description. I'm gonna I'm gonna close this little actually I'm gonna Yeah, I'm gonna close this trade here. How do I close this trade here? What, what is this close close long? Close everything still learning this. I just started this to test it out. All right, cool. There we go. A another yet another I've taken millions of support resistance trades, right? Maybe like what tens of thousands of them. Another support resistance trade just closed. The, the analysis was that price was came to a support zone and it started bouncing. So I bought thinking, okay, well, it might go to the next resistance zone. And then when it gets to this resistance zone, if it starts bouncing here, guess what I'm going to do? You guessed it, my friend, I'm going to sell. Same shit over and over, keeping things simple, controlling risk. I'll see you in my free Telegram channel. First link in the description. Cheers.